Howdy everybody, welcome back. So the other day I was flipping through William Bayard Sturgis 1940 Fly Tying, a seriously old classic book. I'd really only recommend this to some fly tying nerds like me. I mean, the book only has one color plate in it, but there was one fly on that plate that I recognized from somewhere else. The fly was called the Thor. So I did a little bit more digging and I also found it in Joseph Bates, Streamer Fly Tying and Fishing, which that's probably where I first saw the pattern. Now Bates did tell us a little bit about the history. He said the fly was created by C. Jim Prey of Eureka, California on Christmas Day, 1936. And on that same day it was tied, a guy named Walter Thorson, also of Eureka, California, caught an 18 pound steelhead, winning the Field and Stream Contest of the Western Rainbow Fly Division. And Thorson caught several other big steelhead that day using this pattern, so Prey gave the name the Thor after his buddy Thorson. Now another interesting anecdote, exactly two years later, on Christmas Day 1938, a guy named Gene Sapp from Ferndale, California, caught a 17-pound steelhead, also winning the Field and Stream Contest that year. So what is it about steelhead fishing on Christmas Day in Northern California? I have no idea, but I'd love to get into it. Now Jim Prey was a pretty well-known steelhead fly fisherman in the day, but both Sturgis and Bates had the pattern listed as a generic streamer. I did find it in two other books, John Shuey's Classic Steelhead Flies and Mike Vala's Tying and Fishing Bucktails. Now Vala had it tied just a little bit different. Instead of a red chenille body, he used a red Angora dubbing, kind of pulled out. Now that is a pretty cool look, but I'm going to tie it with the original dressing, pretty much how Sturgis had it in his book. But it's a pretty fun tie. I think y'all are going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, a Thor Bucktail. Pretty cool pattern. I would say the effectiveness of this comes from the color scheme that was chosen. Now I'm tying this on a size six, it's a five X long streamer hook. I believe it's a, probably a two extra strong. So let's get that in there and then some black thread. I'll put a base down to the, where the barb used to be. Now the tail on this guy, just some fibers from a orange strung saddle hackle and a, a fair number of them. This is about 20 or so. Let's catch this in kind of long. So it's, you know, a distinct noticeable tail here. Okay. I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to do some loose wraps to just bury these right here. You could cut them if you want, but we're going to be burying it with chenille in a second. So it doesn't really matter. Let's leave our thread right back here and get some red chenille. This is a size medium and I stripped off, you know, a little bit of the end. So I've got some bare thread to catch in right here. We'll catch it in to where we want to start wrapping it. And then take our thread up front. Now just wrap this chenille up and every once in a while you might want to spin it and fluff it back out just to make sure you get a as thick a body as you want, but we're going to take it pretty far up. So right up behind the eye and I'll tell you why in just a second. Okay, two wraps. Let's snip this off and see if we have any fuzz. Had a little bit there. So we took it way far up because this collar hackle we're about to put on it, we're going to need to get it swept back and we're going to tie it down a little bit on top of some of that chenille. So I've got a black feather right here and this is actually from a dry fly half cape. Um, if I was designing this fly myself and you know I might have gone with a black soft hackle but the old book said very specifically to get a feather with stiff shiny long barbs, which pretty much means a rooster. So after we got that caught in, I'm going to bury that little nub and I'm going to wrap this hackle going almost all the way up to the eye. I want it to be swept back, but it's not going to sweep back on its own. You know, after about four wraps, it'll look just like a big dry fly, which is not at all what we want. So go ahead, 
four or five wraps to get this feather right up here behind the eye. Okay, I think that is gonna be fine right there. Two wraps to secure it. Now we'll snip the stem here. So see what I'm talking about? Looks like just a big, huge dry fly. But we're going to pull this back and take several wraps pretty far back. And so these wraps right now are laying down right on top of that, the front of that chenille. I might need to go even a little bit farther back because I want it to be a little more swept back than that, even though that is probably fine, what we have right there. But let's go just a little bit more back. And there we go. That's kind of the look I want. So I'm going to spend a few wraps right here just trying to smooth out this little section so that I have a, a flat area to catch in the bucktail. So the next thing we're going to do, take some bucktail and a fair-sized chunk. And if you've read many of Mike Vala's books, you'll know he says, all bucktail is not created equal. So if you can get a tuft of it that is, you know, stackable, and how you can tell if it's stacked, the ends are no longer lined up. So I think this stacked okay. We'll see in a second. Okay, it did for the most part. I think we're going to be fine. So let's get our length right here. You know, the whole length of the fly, maybe to the tail right there. I think that's going to work. And if you want to, put some wax on your, your thread. I didn't because I forgot. So we'll, we'll make do without doing that. And just be careful that it doesn't slide around the hook on us. And so far it hasn't. And I haven't put any real tight wraps on it. So I'm going to go forward with a couple of tighter wraps. Tight, as, about as tight as I can go without, um, you know, breaking my thread here. Now let's snip this off. And what I'm going to try to do here is cut it as short as I can, but maybe get just a little bit of a taper. So I might have to do this with a couple of snips and just sort of sculpt this around right here. Now that might have worked. Now, since that's a pretty big chunk of bucktail, we're probably going to end up with a big head. Sometimes that's unavoidable. But, you know, I, I'd like to keep a, a smaller head if possible. But go ahead and spin enough thread wraps here to get the, the head you want. Okay, I think that's fine. It didn't get too big on me. So I think we can live with this and we'll be a-okay. Let's go ahead and whip finish it and see if we have any cleanup. So I think we're fine as is. A drop of head cement right there and this guy will be ready to go in my box. So there you go, a Thor bucktail. Pretty cool looking pattern, not really hard to tie. I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.